know if any Jiu-Jitsu seminar you might go to, there's uh, a whole litany of the sort of uh, I guess classic techniques. So I thought maybe we'd focus on some of the things that maybe aren't necessarily part of the core curriculum, but that I've had success with. So you're getting maybe a little bit of a different look at this seminar. So we'll start off with uh, a series from the back. Um, so normally, if I take my opponent's back, uh, I want both hooks in, right? So that refers to my, my heels being inside. And this is you know, where you score points in a jiu-jitsu tournament and where you work, work a lot of chokes, arm bars, etc. cetera. Um, I've been playing with uh, just one hook in. So, and the reason why I like this is I can still get really good control of my opponent's hips but my feet are hidden from me. Because one of the ways Hardy will get out if I have both hooks in is to attack my feet, right? To either get a, a, a foot lock there, he can get a foot lock there, or he could step on my foot, um, start clearing out and getting away. And by using just one hook, but burying it and keeping a figure four, I really limit how, how he can start to escape and I still have good control uh, of his hips. The caveat here is I can't let Hardy get to the other side. Right? If he starts to go, this, if he gets to this side, he's out. So one way I can try to prevent that, and it also opens up a bunch of different attacks, is letting go from the sort of classic seatbelt grip and coming up and around to what we call cross body ride here. Right? So there's a bunch of attacks I have from one hook in cross body ride. Right? One is if I can get Hardy's arm here, I can lean back, put it behind my own shoulder and head, and this is a, in Tenth Planet parlance, the twister. Right? So I've got control of his upper body with my arm, control of his lower body with my legs, and I come under his head towards the top and pull it towards me and it's a uh, Kind of a nasty spine lock. Um, second option, I'm going to reach and grab behind Hardy's knee here. I'm going to fall back. Right? And this is a hip slash groin lock, which is called the banana split. Come get my good stuff, Mr. Fred. And so to finish here, I'm going to plant my foot on the ground. Right, I want to have be behind his knee and I'm pulling his other foot towards me, and if I need to, I'm gonna fire my hips up to get the uncomfortable stretch. So even if someone can do a full split, by <clears throat> pulling down and engaging my hips, you can kind of make them go past split to the point where you're gonna get a tap. Third option is <clears throat> grabbing the leg that my foot is behind up at the toe and pulling down, right? So this is gonna sort of attack his knee joint. So pulling here and stretching out, it's called a vaporizer and it's, it's really quite uncomfortable. If you're going for this, always reach for your, with your outside arm first. And if you need to bring in your other arm, go elbow deep. Because if I just grab here, Hardy can grab my hand and, and now I'm at an arm bar. And then the fourth option, and you don't have to do these all, but just giving you your money's worth. Is a lot of times because Hardy knows I want to attack his legs. He's going to sit up on me here, right? And if you hang your arm out here, a lot of times your opponent's going to grab it. I grab it and I'm just going to rotate him this way. And again, I stop right here, face down. My other hand can come. And even if he grabs his belt, right? I can generate a lot of pressure by swinging my hips over. And then to make it even worse, I slide my elbow up a little bit into his ribs, and then I can really oh. take down and make him want to let go. And then once it's free, just up for the arm lock. One, I get behind this arm, behind my head, and back down for the twister. Two, get under this leg, pull back, plant, fire my hips up and pull down for the banana split. Three, get this leg the behind, pull down for the vaporizer. And four, grab, roll for this schoolyard bully. A rule with, if you're near your punch guard, you don't want to put your hands on the mat. 
And here's one of the reasons why. If there's a, a sequence of techniques I can use to attack my opponent if their hands are on the mat. So I'm gonna go over the sequence really quickly and then do the show the addition that is a little less common for you. So one, I'm gonna come up on my elbow, uh, overhook the arm, and hit into him for the sweep. Number two, very similar, I come up, but he comes back into me. So I'm gonna grab this hand in a Kimura grip and rock back and finish the Kimura lock here. Uh, third is I come up and my opponent's driving into me a little bit, so I'm gonna sit back and wrap up the guillotine and finish here. And then the one that we're adding is I get him up here, but instead of going back for the guillotine or, or for the Kimura, this overhand is gonna reach over his shoulder and between his legs here. And in wrestling, it's called a switch. So from here, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on Hardy's shoulder by scooting my hips way out in this way. Right, and I'm gonna keep turning, and I end up on Hardy's back. But a lot of times, I'll hit this as a counter to a pass. So if, if Hardy wraps up both my legs, right, and he starts to pass, right, legs start passing this way, right? Again, I, my hand's going over behind his shoulder, under his leg. And from here, I'm gonna start sitting out again, sitting out, and now I'm taking his back. The next section, uh, next session is going to be led by uh, my friend John Shell from Shell Shock Jiu Jitsu. Since we got limited time, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to her. Thanks, Hardy. Uh, uh, what I'm going to start off with is just the uh, mount position and um, doing some attacks from the mount. Position. All right. So here in the mount position, if this guy knows anything about this position, he's going to be guarding his neck. He's going to be guarding his arms. They're all going to be here protecting. Him. So what I like to do to, to mitigate his defenses is grab both of his hands, just shift them down, and then lay on top of him. The first thing I'm gonna go for in this position is that my thumb is gonna go around his neck and inside his lapel. I'm gonna make a fist, and I'm gonna drop my uh, elbow down to his chest, and I'm putting a lot of pressure with my wrist on his neck. Yeah, he's able to feel that here. I'm still maintaining pressure on his hands. Because if I can keep his hands there, that's what I want. So now, I'm gonna use my palm on the ground as counter pressure, and I'm gonna bring him up, slide my arm under, and push my elbow past his shoulder to grab my elbow, and then put my head on the mat above his head. So I'm gonna start pushing him to the side here. Now, a lot of times what people decide is they're like, I don't wanna get an arm lock. So the best defense is to get this elbow back down. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna go flat to his back, and when he does, I trap his elbow with my chest and keep it nice and tight here, okay? So he can't get that arm back out because my body is blocking it. Now I'm going to take this hand, move his head out of the way, grab inside of his lapel here, and I'm going to drop my elbow down and then straighten my body. That. I go here, he drives his body down, I keep my body heavy on that elbow. I don't want that going away. If I'm here, he's just going to drop it down, he's going to be free. So keep pressure, start dropping down. All right, once I keep pressure on that elbow, it's in this, right in the center of my chest. Move this out of the way. I can either grab the, the material behind the neck or inside the lapel the same way. Once I have a grip, I drop my elbow underneath his neck and I straighten my body. Now I start pressing. 